Hello, I'm Arjun. Today I'm going to tell you about a new scheduling system we've built for mobility platforms. This is joint work with my collaborators at MIT and UIUC. Mobility platforms are the backbones for a number of vital services today, such as package delivery, food delivery, and ride sharing. Demand on many of these platforms has only exploded during the COVID-19 pandemic. Moreover, there are emerging mobility platforms like drones as a service systems, where a shared drone fleet can be used to simultaneously serve an array of urban sensing apps from air quality mapping to traffic sensing. In these mobility platforms, the vehicle fleet of cars, vans, bikes, or drones is a shared infrastructure. The platform serves multiple customers with each customer requiring a set of tasks to be completed. For instance, a restaurant subscribing to Uber Eats is a customer with several food delivery orders or tasks in a city. The problem of scheduling tasks on a vehicle fleet has been studied extensively for decades. This scheduling problem is known as the vehicle routing problem. The VRP involves computing routes for each vehicle so that as many customer tasks are completed within the resource constraints, like fuel or battery. Mobility platforms today seek to maximize the platform throughput or task completion rate. In this work, we identify a second equally important scheduling requirement, which has emerged from these customer-centric mobility platforms. In addition to delivering high throughput, mobility platforms must ensure that customer throughputs are similar. So why is per customer fairness important? Well, optimizing solely for platform throughput can cause some customers like restaurants and food delivery platforms or neighborhoods and ride sharing platforms to experience poor throughput because their tasks are inherently harder to complete. Uber calls this phenomenon destination discrimination. Moreover, many aerial sensing apps are reactive, meaning that their sensing preferences change as drones gather measurements. In order for these apps to make progress toward their sensing goals, while coexisting with other apps on the same shared platform, they need measurements in a timely manner. Now, it turns out that shared mobility makes it very complicated to reason about and optimize for fairness. There are three key challenges. First, attributing vehicle time to each customer. A common approach to balance throughput and fairness in operating systems or networking is to do some bean counting or fine-grained accounting of how much of a resource is consumed by a given user. Such fine-grained accounting is really hard to do in mobility platforms where vehicles club tasks from multiple customers into the same route. Second, the desired timescale of fairness can have a significant impact on the platform's throughput. This is in contrast to packet switch networks where scheduling decisions are made over much shorter timescales. And third, customer, de customer demand can have a wide variety of spatial temporal properties that can greatly impact the throughput a mobility platform is able to deliver. In the next couple of slides, I'm gonna focus on the first challenge, but we discuss all three at length in our paper. Let's dive into this with an example. Let's say we're a small food delivery service in San Francisco, and we have orders from two restaurants that we want to drop off. We have some boba orders distributed like this, and some samosa orders distributed like so. Let's assume that we have two delivery vehicles that start here. Now let's see what a few different algorithms might do. Here's a schedule that maximizes throughput. Notice that the vehicles gravitate toward the more clustered boba orders, delivering a few samosa orders along the way. One straw man to achieve fairness is to round robin between customer tasks. Notice that while the restaurant throughputs are equal, the total throughput is low because the vehicles waste so much time traveling. Another approach is to dedicate a vehicle to each restaurant. This would give each restaurant equal vehicle time, but it misses out on any incentive to share vehicles across customers. For instance, the platform could have gotten higher throughput if the red vehicle were allowed to pick up some samosa orders on the way to the cluster of boba orders, since this would have freed up some time on the blue vehicle. What we want is something more like this. Notice that the, max, uh, that the throughput is split roughly equally amongst customers. At the same time, the total throughput is similar to the max throughput algorithm. A key takeaway from these examples is that when we decide to share a vehicle amongst multiple customers, it becomes really hard to attribute vehicle time to customers and therefore reason about fairness. So to solve these challenges, we introduce Mobius, an online scheduler that provides provably good throughput and fairness. So here's the problem we're trying to solve. We have a bunch of tasks from different customers and we have a fleet of vehicles. 
Our goal is to plan routes for each vehicle for some horizon into the future, say 30 minutes. And then we execute those routes for some time, say 10 minutes. Now in these 10 minutes, some new tasks may have arrived. So it's time to replan again. And we repeat this process, incorporating new tasks and replanning at regular intervals. Now, let me simplify this example a bit to give you some intuition for how Mobius works. Let's say we have two customers with the tasks distributed as shown in the map here. And the vehicle start here. We're interested in computing 10 minute round trips. And for simplicity, we assume that all tasks are renewed at the start of each round trip. We'll revisit these assumptions in a few slides. We're going to visualize the schedules in terms of their per customer throughputs on this chart here. The X and Y axes show the throughputs for customers one and two, respectively. Each dot here corresponds to a feasible 10 minute round trip schedule. We compute each feasible schedule by invoking the VRP solver. So it's computationally expensive to generate this entire feasible set. This point here corresponds to the schedule with maximal throughput. Notice that it favors customer one since its tasks are closer to the start location and thus easier for the vehicles to fulfill. We call the schedules along the Y equals X line fair since they all deliver equal throughput to both customers. Now, there's no reason to want to schedule in the interior of this feasible set. Rather, we're only interested in schedules on the Pareto frontier. In this example, the schedule B is a fair Pareto optimal schedule. However, notice that its total throughput is low since a vehicle is forced to make a special trip to customer two's cluster. The max throughput schedule fulfills four more tasks per round than this fair schedule. Now, can we do better than this? Specifically, can we achieve higher throughput while still being fair? Now, the turquoise line shows the convex boundary over the feasible set, defined by the corner points A, C, D, and E. Formally, the convex boundary is the smallest polygon around the feasible set, such that no vertex bends inward. Now, in instead of the schedule B, we'd actually prefer this schedule, since it has higher throughput and is just as fair. Let's call this allocation the target throughput. Notice that it's not feasible in the current round. But I'm going to show you how Mobius can achieve this target throughput at a slightly longer time scale. The key idea is that as we look at this problem over multiple rounds, the set of feasible throughputs becomes denser, and the Pareto frontier starts to approach the convex boundary. Now let's see how Mobius can reach this target throughput. We're going to do this by looking at the long-term or average throughput achieved by Mobius over time. Mobius picks schedule A in the first round since it's the corner point that's closest to the target throughput. After the first round, the long-term throughput is also at A. Now recall in this example that we're doing 10 minute round trips and the tasks reappear at the same location. So in the next round, Mobius chooses C. So this moves the long-term throughput to the midpoint of the line segment AC. Notice that it's already gotten closer to the target throughput. In the third round, Mobius picks A. Now the long-term throughput is even closer to the target throughput. And if we repeat this, choosing between A and C at the right frequency, we find that the long-term throughput converges to the target throughput. In fact, we've proven a paper that this target throughput that Mobius achieves is indeed the best possible throughput that Mobius could have achieved given the fairness objective of equalizing throughput. Now, the analysis in this example was simple because the environment was static, which means that the convex boundary remained unchanged from one round to the next. In practice, though, environments are more dynamic. Customer tasks may not recur at the same location, and vehicles need not return to their start locations as frequently. So let's consider a modified example where tasks are generated randomly every three minutes according to the distribution shown in this map. We want 10 minute routes that aren't round trip this time, and we'll replan every three minutes to incorporate any new tasks that have arrived. Let's look at the convex boundaries at each three minute replanning interval. Notice that they hover around a fairly narrow band, indicating that we can still track that target throughput reliably. This holds because vehicles move continuously over space and customer tasks tend to observe some consistent spatial locality. So to recap, there are three key insights that we leverage in designing Mobius. First, it's a safe bet to expect the feasible set to become convex with time. Second, the convex boundary trades off short-term fairness for a boost in throughput. And third, we can achieve the target throughput with time by operating at different schedules on the convex boundary. Let's revisit our previous example to visualize how Mobius works. I'm gonna show snapshots from consecutive rounds of operating Mobius. 
In this round, notice that Mobius dedicates one vehicle to each customer. And notice that it's approximately fair, but it doesn't equalize the throughputs. Now I want to draw your attention to the next round, where Mobius identifies the imbalance in customer throughput. And it directs vehicle one to fulfill some customers, some tasks for the blue customer, while completing some tasks for the red customer in the outbound and return journeys. And in the third round, it adopts a similar policy of dedicating a vehicle to each customer. Notice that Mobius is able to adapt its scheduling policy and bias dynamically because it has multiple schedules on the convex boundary at its disposal. By contrast, the max throughput and dedicated schedulers would continue to enforce the same policy with time since they don't have this luxury to choose from a class of schedules. Our paper includes more details about how Mobius invokes the VRP sparingly to efficiently compute corner points on the convex boundary. We also extend Mobius to support more customers, as well as a class of fairness objectives like proportional fairness and maximum fairness. Finally, we include a theoretical analysis of Mobius's optimality in our paper. We implement Mobius in about 2,300 lines of Go, and it plugs with many standard VRP solvers out there today. We also implemented many customers or app applications atop Mobius, and importantly, application logic is decoupled from the scheduling system so we can support arbitrarily complex logic at the application layer. Our source code is available on GitHub, and we encourage you to take a look. Now we evaluate Mobius on two real world case studies, and I'll discuss some of the highlights from our evaluation in the next few slides. In one case study, we applied Mobius to ride sharing. We obtained a 13 hour trace of time stamped Lyft ride requests in Manhattan. And this included over 16,000 requests across 40 neighborhoods or zones. The 40 zones are demarcated on this map. Each request included a pickup location and drop off location, and we constrain a vehicle to carry at most one request at any given time. We consider a fleet of 200 vehicles. We wanted to see if Mobius could be used to solve this problem of destination discrimination that motivated this work. More specifically, can we fulfill pickups from all zones equitably or do maximum fairness? This plot visualizes the demand where each arrow represents a pickup drop off pair and the color of the arrow indicates the volume of ride requests with those pickup drop off locations. Notice that, notice that the volume varies significantly. For instance, a large fraction of requests arrive into and depart from lower Manhattan. Further, some zones in upper Manhattan have as few as 15 outbound, unique outbound trajectories, while other zones have hundreds. Let's see how different scheduling algorithms compare. On the bottom chart here, I'm showing the long-term average throughput achieved by different schemes after 13 hours. On the top, I'll show a heat map of the average throughput in each zone. Ideally, you would like a heat map with bright colors, meaning high throughput, and a, and a homogeneous spread of colors, meaning that it's fair. We'd also like a bar chart with large, evenly sized blocks. Notice that the max throughput algorithm derived, uh, divides the throughput very unevenly across zones. While it serves nearly 200 rides per hour out of zones in lower Manhattan, it virtually starves zones near Central Park. The schedule that dedicates vehicles shares the platform throughput evenly across zones. You can see this both with the evenly sized blocks in the bar chart and the fairly homogeneous heat map. Notice that it achieves about 40% lower platform throughput than the max throughput scheduler. Mobius, by contrast, strikes the best balance between throughput and fairness. It provides roughly equal zone throughputs and compromises only about 10% of the maximum platform throughput. Now, compared to dedicating vehicles, we see that Mobius achieves higher throughput for most zones by identifying an incentive to, share, to chain requests from different zones. So for example, Mobius combines two requests from different zones into the same trip when the drop-off of the first request is close to the pickup of the second request. We also evaluate Mobius on a real drones as a service deployment in Boston. And I encourage you to check, our, check out our paper to learn more about the results. In building Mobius, we characterize the tension between throughput and fairness caused by shared mobility. And we discover that the convex boundary strikes the right balance between the two. We deployed Mobius on two railroad case studies and showed that Mobius can simultaneously provide high throughput and fairness in its vehicle schedules and also operate at citywide scale. Thanks for listening and uh, please visit our website to give Mobius a try.